Hello YouTube and welcome to this brand new video where I'm coming at you from a brand new angle for a brand new episode of the hypertrophy series. And today we're going to rediscuss a subject that I introduced three months ago, which is muscular failure, which is tied to muscular fatigue. But I'm not going to re-explain that thing. If you don't know what it is, please go back and watch the previous video. It's in the hypertrophy series playlist. No, today we're actually going to talk about a different type of fatigue, a different type of failure that is the most common when it comes to failing a lift. For the most part, your muscles don't give up. What gives up is the structural integrity of your body, which I call a mechanical failure. A mechanical failure is what happens when the muscle could keep pushing, but the structure that is supposedly stabilizing the weight doesn't manage to maintain its integrity crumbles and therefore steals the muscle the ability to move the weight that can happen when you do back squats and your upper back rounds and you are suddenly good morning the weight up instead of pushing with your quads same for the deadlift when you push your hips up too fast and you end up with a rounded lower back and you end up just lifting the weight like a crane instead of pushing with your legs this can apply to every single lift, but of, of course it is much more strikingly visually uh, unappealing when it comes to lower body lifts because it's the most evident. But you can also have mechanical failure happen on the bench, on curls, etc. etc. Why is mechanical failure so bad? It is terrible, one, because you stop being able to target the right muscles, meaning that suddenly the tonnage that you thought were, was applying to a certain body part you want to grow is now up in the air. But that's not the worst because at the end of the day, if that's just another muscle group that's taking the load, then fine, you're still getting growth out of it. The issue is that a lot of that tonnage is now being repercuted not on muscles, but on your structure, meaning your skeleton, your tendons, etc., etc. And even though it's true that you do want to train those things, it is my opinion that they don't really need direct work and you shouldn't shift the weight on a compound movement onto them because they would grow just fine if you have proper form. What is most likely going to happen if you suffer mechanical failure with super maximum weight is injury. The structure is going to snap. This is something we want to avoid at all costs because it is going to be the great destroyer of tonnage by disallowing you to train. I have explained in other videos that certain rep ranges are extremely propice to pushing you into a mechanical failure, especially, especially on certain lifts. Uh, I am going to repeat it right now, but keep in mind that this can change from individual to individual. I personally believe, for example, that the deadlift shouldn't be done in higher rep ranges because what is very likely to happen is your quads, your glutes, and all of that, sorry, I said quads, armstrings, glutes, all of that, are still going to be fresh and able to move the weight, but there is a strong chance that the actual thoracic extension that gives you that ability to push with your legs is going to die. It's the same for front squats. A lot of people are going to have much more thoracic extension uh, or rather vice versa. They're going to have much more leg strength than thoracic extension strength and therefore they're going to reach a stage of failure with the thoracic extension where the legs could keep pushing. So not only are you now heightening the risk of failing a lift and hurting yourself, but you're also not pushing the muscle groups to an intensity window where they would be really challenged. So how do we avoid that? How do we always avoid mechanical failure? Well, first you have to know your body very well. You have to be, you have to be humble, right? You have to not ego lift and not push through things that you know you shouldn't be grinding, but there are also very easy ways to avoid that. And it's called intensity and volume manipulation uh, pertaining to certain lifts. If you know that a certain lift is going to push you into mechanical failure, if you go into a certain rep range, just avoid that rep range. For some people, it's going to be the other way around. For example, for squats, if you have a tendency to good morning the weight up, when the weight is very low and the intensity is high. Uh, in that case, what's gonna happen is 
you should always be striving to do your squat in higher rep ranges. That way you can feel and sense that extra rep coming and you know what I'm talking about. That extra rep is the rep where you, you don't really know if you're going to get it. That rep is very beneficial for mental strength and also because it's pushing your muscles to the brink. But you also understand that the larger the rep range is, the easier it is to foresee that rep coming because the distinction in intensity from rep to rep is smaller. If you do three reps, the jump of intensity between the second and the third rep is much bigger than, for example, if you do ten, you did 10 reps between the sixth and the seventh rep. Why? Because it's, the, the intensity window is much, more, uh, it's much smaller and it's shrunk here while it's wide there. And with that second option, you're also going to find that leaving a rep in the tank is going to be much easier. Because if you leave reps in the tank on lower rep ranges, because each rep represents so much total tonnage, you are potentially sacrificing a lot of weight. Meanwhile, if you did 10 reps and you sacrificed the last one, the percentage of weight that you sacrificed on the set is not as high. As far as making sure that mechanical failure never happens, well, the best way is just to do what I just described, reps in the tank, especially on strength work. I personally strive to never have ugly reps. That's also a mindset that is going to allow you to avoid that mechanical failure. If you never allow yourself to grind early reps, then you're never going to have mechanical failure happen to you. And an easy way to apply that is if you do a set, even if you get the reps, but you, f you know it was ugly, you know the technique wasn't there, just retake it. This is progressive overload. You might not put weight on the bar, not, you might not be getting stronger, but by tightening your, uh, your form and your technique, now all of the tonnage of the lift is actually being applied to the muscles that you want. And on the other side of that, keep in mind that because mechanical failure happens within the set due to mechanical fatigue, this is also going to have to do with your technique. Maybe it's not your structure that's weak, it's certain aspects of it, like your thoracic extension, which can be strengthened, or your setup, your form, your technique. All of that could boost your ability to avoid mechanical failure a ton. Keep also in mind that if you don't take and heed by that advice, mechanical fatigue that creates mechanical failure builds up and leads to injury. That's what tendonitis is. That's what we call overuse injury. You repeat a movement again and again and your body is weak in it and most likely your technique is lacking and therefore the muscles are not as involved as you think the structure, the skeleton, the tendons have to take over, they get used, overused, and they snap. And we want to avoid that at all cost. So that's going to be it for the day, for that new type of failure introduced in the hypertrophy series. We have a few others to cover, like for example, the central nervous system, which is going to be an interesting talk. I appreciate you watching those videos. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.